Hi everybody, welcome back to Prepper Junkie. Today we have another PSA firearm. Looks like an AR-15, but it's not. This is chambered in 300 blackout. Let's get started. All right, so uh, what comes in the box? It comes with your typical manual and uh, gun lock and things like that. It comes with one 30 round PMAG. This is actually um, an AR-15 PMAG. Um, 300 blackout will go in these. Um, some people have said that they have problems. Some people say that it runs fine when you put them in uh, these uh, 556 p mags um but if you if you're not comfortable you can just buy 300 blackout mags which are specifically designed they're about the same price as uh these standard p mags here but um so yeah it comes with the 130 round mag we have the sba3 brace at the back here um i i've mentioned this before uh, but the sba3 brace is still my favorite uh, because they have the sba4 brace um, but I am still a fan of the SBA3. This is still my go-to. We have a little Palmetto State Armory uh, logo stamped on the back here. We do have a QD sling on either side here for your sling attachments. And obviously uh, this is adjustable with multiple positions right there. We have a mil spec buffer tube right here. And then moving down to the castle nut, it has been double staked, which PSA has been doing for a little while now, but it's still nice to see that they are doing that. Uh, moving along, now this upper and lower receiver is a standard AR-15 uh, receiver set. It's 7075 T6 aluminum. Um, it has all the standard features, forward assist, dust cover, uh, mag release right there. On the other side, we have the boat catch and release, and we have a safety on that side right there. Um, so again, it's, it is a AR-15 upper and lower receiver. That's what it is. Uh, at the top here, we have a standard charging handle. I really dislike these. Um, they work, yes, absolutely function uh, just fine, but I like to switch these out. It's one of the first things I'll do, put something like an ambi charging handle in or something that's a little more extended, just so I can get a better purchase on there. But do you need to? No, absolutely, they do work just fine. Um, okay, so we have a 1913 pick reel all the way along here, so you can attach iron sights, scope, red dot, I don't know, whatever you wanna do. Um, so plenty of rail space up here. Uh, moving down, uh, we have a curved trigger guard here. This is a Magpul trigger guard. Um, I, yeah, I love Magpul. We have a PSA EPT trigger, which stands for Enhanced, Enhanced Polish Trigger. Um, it's a nice upgrade from a mil spec. It's not as nice as a higher end trigger, but it's definitely a step up from mil spec. Uh, we have a Magpul MOE uh, grip right here. It's the uh, polymer, it's not the rubber overmold. Has some nice texturing on either side, and it has these uh, kind of serrations on the front and back there. I love Magpul furniture, as I just said. Uh, feels good in the hand. Has a little storage compartment down there to hide wherever you would like. Uh, batteries, I don't know, what a candy. Whatever you guys like. All right, so, uh, yeah, dust cover, bolt carry grip. Uh, we'll go over that in a little second. Uh, moving on up, we have, let me take this mag out real fast. So the rail here, you can see it's pretty short. So uh, this rail is seven inches long and they classify this firearm, firearm as lightweight and it's to do with um, how aggressive uh, this rail has been cut out. So you can see here, we've got some really aggressive cutouts right here. Then we have some M-lock cutouts, M-lock cutouts, M-lock. So M-lock at three, six and nine position and everything else has just been kind of cut out. Uh, you can also see the gas system right here is really short. This is a pistol length gas system and the barrel is eight and a half inches. It's a 4150 CMV. It's a one in seven twist and the thread is a five by a five eighths by 24 and it has an A2 um, flash hider on the front there. So yeah, uh, that is pretty much the outside um, of this. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to put this down on the table, we'll change the camera angle, we'll go over the trigger and the internals, and I'll be right back with you. All right, so we'll go over the trigger and that in just a second. If you are new to 300 Blackout, I want to give you a size comparison with these rounds here. So one on the far left here is a 223.556 round. Uh, this middle one is your 300 Blackout right here. And then this one is a 762 by 39 So you can see the similarities in size here uh, with the 762 by 39 so these are very hard hitting rounds. Um, and so a lot of people refer to the 223556 as being underpowered and obviously these being a lot harder hitting. It's true, um, but they definitely both have their pros and cons. So anyway, just a little side by side comparison here for you just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. Put them aside. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do the trigger pull. Let's see what we get. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a PSA uh, enhanced polish trigger. So let's see what we get. We're on safe. Let me take that off. Okay, so let's see what the trigger pull is like. 
Okay, we got a little bit of take up and then we'll ride the brake. And there was only a millimeter or two there and the brake, as you heard, was very audible, very tactile, actually pretty clean and crisp. Um, not as nice, again, as a higher end trigger, but it's definitely not too shabby. Let's move this, let's see what the, uh, the let out's like. A little bit of let out, a little thunk there, you heard that. Um, so yeah, very audible and tactile again. And as I said, the brake is pretty decent, so not a bad trigger. Okay, let's see what the trigger pull is like. We're going to use a Wheeler trigger pull scale. So let's switch this on. Okay, let's see what the pull weight we get. We got five and a half pounds. Let's do that one more time to make sure uh, we're getting the consistent pull. Well, that one came out at, at just about five pounds. Let me do that one more time. 5.2. Okay, so actually I've done this a few times um, and typically it's came out around about five and a half pounds. So I'm gonna go with with that, I know those those pulls were a little different, but typically this has been pulling about five and a half pound trigger, which for a mil spec trigger is pretty dang decent. Okay, so to break this down, as I said, it is the same as an AR-15. So you've just got the front pin and uh, the best me, the back pin and this front pin. This front pin has been a little stiff, being so new. So we're gonna push that down. So you're gonna just pull those pins up, and then you're gonna take the lower off, like so. Okay, so as, I say, as you know, this is your fire control group. You have your buffer and your buffer spring back here. Everything is just a standard lower receiver. Pulling out the charging handle and the bolt carrier group. So this is your standard charging handle. I really don't care for these. I'm not gonna review it. Um, okay, so uh, this is your bolt carrier group. Uh, the fit and finish looks really nice. Um, there's no machine marks. Let's check out the, the uh, staking here. The staking is not great on this one. Um, on the left side here, it's not particularly done well, uh, which is one of the first times I've seen this from PSA, the staking not been great, um, but is what it is, I guess. But yeah, it's not fantastic on that left side. The right side's not too bad, but this left side's not great. It's made of carpenter steel, uh, 158, which is stamped right there and is stamped with MPI tested right on the end of your bolt right here. So this is your bolt and this is your bolt carrier. So other than that, staking not been great. Everything else looks really, really good. Um, so that's that. So that's just a basic uh, disassembly. And obviously to put it back together, just go in reverse. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back together and then I'm gonna change the camera angle and I'll be back with you in just one second. All right, so how are we shooting it? Shooting was a lot of fun. Um, I'm only shooting, I only had um, some subsonic uh, 220 grain ammo to hand. I didn't have any supersonics. I didn't get to fire any of that through it. Um, with the subs though, it worked just great. I had no problems uh, whatsoever. And I really wanted, you know, I would have had a lot more fun if I switched this out and put a, uh, a suppressor on it, but I wanted to, to shoot it as configured how I got it. So um, to make sure everything functions just fine before I started tweaking with it. So yeah, yeah, very cool. Uh, very cool gun, um, very cool round, uh, very adaptable round depending on what you need it for. Um, so yeah, very cool, excellent. As I say, backpack gun, truck gun, uh, home defense gun, you name it. Um, it can do it all, so yeah, very, very cool. All right, so pricing on this comes in at $829, which I feel is very reasonable um, for this gun. Um, again, you know, I mean, things are starting to calm down a little bit at the time of posting this video, but even still, I think $829 is very, very reasonable, um, a very doable price to get into your 300 blackout. So yeah, very cool. Uh, just remember Palmetto Star Armory has a lifetime warranty on all of their firearms also. So if you ever have any problems with it, you can contact them and get it sorted out, um, which is also kind of that peace of mind. Uh, it's nice to have. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, please ask them below. I'm always happy to help out wherever I can. If you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please do so. It does not cost you a dime, but it greatly, uh, greatly helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. And that's it. All right, folks, until next time, I'll catch you later.